and surveillance system for Route 8, a new highway under construction in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is one of the busiest cities in the world, with limited space, difficult terrain, and dense building development. Construction of highway infrastructure is always a challenge. Despite all the constraints, over the years, Hong Kong has developed a very comprehensive road network with a total road length of about 2,000 kilometers and a number of outstanding transport, lam tra transport landmarks. Among those, the Chiang Mai Beach, which links the airport in Lantau Island to the city, is the longest suspension bridge in the world, carrying both road and rail traffic. To maintain Hong Kong's position as a regional transport and business hub, the Hong Kong government is committed to continue investing heavily in transport infrastructure development. The ambitious transport infrastructure development program involves a total investment of about 50 billion Canadian dollars, including some 33 billion Canadian dollar investment in railway projects, and another 13.5 billion Canadian dollar investment in road projects. As Delton and many other companies do agree, Hong Kong is a truly free economy. We provide a level free playing field for all those who do business in Hong Kong. Our economy is built on free enterprise, free trade, and free market open to all. All our infrastructure projects are open to international bidding. Moreover, government procurement procedures are among the most transparent in the world. We welcome talent from around the world to come to Hong Kong and play a part in our infrastructural projects. No doubt Hong Kong will present a lucrative market for Canadian companies who have, who have expertise in transport infrastructure. But when you consider your Go East strategy, you will not be eyeing on Hong Kong's market alone. There is a bigger, much bigger market up law. The rapid economic development in China generates substantial and persistent demand for quality engineering services. Many Chinese developers see Hong Kong as a shining example of successful infrastructural development. They benchmark on Hong Kong's success. Many Chinese investors prefer using Hong Kong's engineering services to support their mainland project because of the knowledge of the mainland market, the strength of Hong Kong's company in respect of quality control, management, and technical skills. Using Hong Kong as your launching pad, just like Delton and many others, or teaming up with the Hong Kong partners is a winning strategy for exploring the mainland market. Our office and other Hong Kong family members, like the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, Invest Hong Kong, and Hong Kong Canada Business Association will be pleased to talk to you further on the opportunity offered by Hong Kong. Once again, I would like to congratulate Delton for your well-deserved success in Hong Kong. With our office present here in Toronto, we will surely call you up for any aftercare services whenever there is traffic congestion in Route 8. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here to, uh, to honor Delcan and its success. Uh, and, you know, Delcan has a, a long history of, of successful projects uh, in Asia, and I know that, uh, you know, they'll continue to, to provide innovative solutions well into the future, some of which I think we could use right here in the Toronto area, but uh, we'll talk about that in terms of traffic congestion at another time, but uh, <laughs> uh, for another day. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this project... Uh, and uh, Delcan's involvement in it is a prime example, I think, of the kinds of uh, initiatives we need for Asia, uh, for our Canadian strategy with respect to, uh, to China, to Asia in general. And I think it's, it demonstrates very clearly how we can succeed, how Canadian companies can succeed in uh, foreign markets, in uh, Asia in particular. Uh, it's not just about selling uh, what we have to offer and then, you know, leaving, leaving it alone. It's not just about exports. It's more than that. It's about building relationships. It's about building partnerships. Partnerships uh, with the, the private sector, between the private sector and government. I've often talked about how in Ontario we have a lot going for us. We have uh, capable, uh, in, capable, skilled uh, labor. We have a highly educated workforce, uh, and uh, we look to that workforce in the future to continue to make us a more innovative economy. And uh, to that end, our government is investing very heavily in education to ensure that we are on the cutting edge when it comes to a highly skilled workforce, providing the best skilled, most educated workforce in the world. Beyond that, 
it's also important to recognize that if we are to compete in markets like Asia, we need, as I say, an integration between the private sector and, and pri uh, the public uh, sector as well. Both are educational institutions, universities and colleges, the fine work that they do with respect to research and development. Uh, we need to integrate what they're doing with what the private sector is doing. And I think this is the way we will, we will proceed with respect to a strategy for Asia, with respect to a strategy for additional mar winning additional markets around the world. Uh, by, it's only by working in partnership that we will successfully compete in the future, applying all the advantages that we have as an economy. So today we are here to, uh, to congratulate, to honor Dalcan and its successful uh, um, uh, contract. Uh, I think, uh, as I say, they are a shining example of how we can do business in the Asia market, and there's more to come. Uh, our government, the McGinty government, is determined to have a successful strategy with respect to the Asian, Asian markets. Uh, but we can only do so if we leverage uh, also the advantages we have with respect to the diversity that makes up this province. We want to use the contacts uh, that uh, exist in, in the, the Chinese community and the Asian community and leverage those to win uh, support abroad for additional work, for additional investments, uh, expanding our export markets. This is a strategy that previous governments haven't utilized. I think we are wasting resources and wasting the tremendous opportunities that we have if we don't take advantage of that. Canada, you know, is unique in that regard. In Ontario in particular, we have such a diversified population, and yet we're not taking full advantage of it. Today I see that uh, advantage being utilized. We need more Delcans competing around the world, and particularly in the Asian markets. And as we expand, our horizons as our uh, government looks to uh, develop further linkages around the world, particularly in Asia, uh, as everyone knows is becoming far more important to us. Uh, we look to, um, to work with the, the Chinese community, with the Asian community in general, to expand our opportunities there. Uh, and I think this will lead to some success. So I'm happy to be here today to congratulate uh, uh, Delcan for its fine work for many, many years and continue uh, with your success and bright uh, prospects for the future. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Minister, for your accolades, and thank you, Bozanio, for your congratulations. But let me thank all of you uh, who braved the uh, crazy weather today to come out and celebrate with us. And I really appreciate that. And I'd like to thank our uh, co-host in uh, the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade, headed by uh, Minister Caliano here. And also, uh, Osanio So, leading the uh, troops of uh, Hong Kong Economic Trade Office. And uh, I also like to thank you, Osanio, for allowing us to use this charming building as a venue. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Uh, yeah. And uh, of course, uh, Delca has been in business in Hong Kong uh, since, I think, in the 80s. And we have many, done many projects, including the Chingma Bridge, the West Harbor Crossing, the Hong Kong airport system, and so on and so forth. But Route 8 by far is our largest project to date. And for that, uh, we are here today really to celebrate the success of Canadian expertise, particularly Ontario expertise, and also pay tribute to uh, international partnerships, particularly between Ontario and, and Hong Kong. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been in Hong Kong many years and with many successes. And throughout the years, we have received a lot of help from the uh, Hong Kong ETO office. Your encouragement, your information, uh, your help in establishing content. And uh, indeed, Bozani, you're right. We found that Hong Kong has been a very level playing field. Sometimes too level, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, everything there is very transparent and open. The government engineers are fair and, uh, and very open. And, it's really a pleasure to uh, to be there, and uh, and of course, the Hong Kong government engineers uh, having a culture of uh, respecting the rule of law, they respect our contract clauses uh, and uh, to the level actually. So it's a pleasure to work there, and of course, uh, don't forget, uh, Hong Kong is easy to get to and easy to work in, because before I started Hong Kong, I had a vision that 
wherever there are traffic congestions, there are good business for Delta. Okay. <laughs> and where, wherever there are traffic congestions, there are great hotels, good restaurants, and fantastic karaoke bars. <laughs> so Rexley uh, will be enjoying the karaoke uh, in Hong Kong uh, in a few months' time. So. Um, and of course, we found also that uh, with the great uh, banking, communication facility in Hong Kong, uh, it serves as a very good uh, base to attack the China market from, and in fact, the rest of Asia. And we've been using our Hong Kong office to that extent. Uh, you may be interested in Nova Samuel. Yeah? And of course, uh, uh, but make no mistakes though, the Hong Kong government engineers, as uh, I know their men have found out, is very competent, uh, no nonsense, and quite demanding actually. So you have to do an absolutely good job. You have to be excellent, you, you've got to provide the top expertise. And I'm pleased to say, uh, Mr. Minister, that we Ontario firms have no problems in this regard. Because the Ontario government, through its Ministry of Transportation, has been providing Ontario firms like Dalcan many opportunities to acquire innovations, new skills, that we can export overseas. Uh, for example, uh, the Ontario government entrusted Delcan some years ago to build the Compass system on 401. And today, on a daily basis, except yesterday, uh, <laughs> the, our Delcan software is running the traffic on 401, which, by the way, is the heaviest highway in the world, running some 400,000 vehicles a day. And uh, through a very uh, advanced fiber optics network, also designed by Delcan, so with these skills, we can compete quite effectively overseas. And as the Chinese says, you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. You give him, uh, teach a man how to fish, he eats for a lifetime. And we've been taught how to fish by the Ontario government. And now we are landing big fish offshore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Of course, uh, talk about international trade partnership, we have always rely on the help of Ontario Export Inc. Uh, sometimes they give us financial assistance, probably not frequently enough, but, uh, <laughs> but always, always they give us very down-to-earth advice, give us a good survey of the market area, help us to establish contact, and people like, uh, help from people like Al Waba, Jim Thompson, and Philip Wong have been invaluable to Delta, uh, Mr. Minister. So I don't know whether you get the promotion for it. No money left. <laughs> By the way, Bill Simonson is here with me, so uh, uh, well done, OEI, no uh, for helping us. Thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to conclude the remark. I'm very happy that you're here, and I'd like to thank my co-host again, and I hope that you all Enjoy yourself and uh, have a nice lunch. Thank you very much. Mr. May I now invite uh, uh, Mr. Tony Wong, MPP Markham, and Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of uh, Economic Development and Trade to come up uh, and to have a group photo with us. We would also like to invite uh, Mr. Bill Saunderson, uh, Chairman of Ontario Exports Inc. Right Mr. Saunderson, please. Uh, we also like to invite uh, Mr. Jim Kerr and Peter Boy of Delcan International Corporation to join us in the group photo. Delcan Hong Kong has a percent of the Oh, Thank you.
按手政府啊咁解。咁你提過就交驚香港以前八十年代已經開始㗎。冇錯。咁佢真正發展期間係係最長最近十年啦，定係係點？唔係啊，我哋由一九一九九一年開始已經有好多大 project， 例如個青馬大橋啦、誒西隧啊等等，不斷喺香港興建新機場嗰時咧，我哋都有受受惠到誒受惠到好多 project。